So welcome, welcome everybody. Happy Sunday, happy Navaratri. Last night was the first night of Navaratri. Tonight is the second night um, of nine, right? So you have nine nights celebrating the goddess and um, how I've been uh, approaching it because the thing about Navaratri is it happens twice a year, right? So it happens in the spring, it happens in the autumn, it happens during these turning seasons, right? The seasons where everything is really shifting and changing and either being reborn or dying because those two things are really the same, right? When something dissolves, it means that something else is already emerging. So every time you come through this holiday or every time this energy is manifested again is it's new, right? It's new for the moment that it's happening. And so our interpretation of the goddess can't ever be that it's exactly the same as it was before, or she's always like this. It always looks like this. It always acts like this. It has to be that this is how that energy is re-emerging right at this moment right, in the world that we're in. Because the celebration of Navaratri is ultimately to bring energy that has become chaotic, that has become stagnant, that's become crazy, and to start to bring it back into a balanced state, to start to bring it back into peace. This is what Durga is always called on to do. They, we say in a very simple way that she comes to fight the demons, right? That's what she's called for, is come fight these demons that the gods can't handle and that are terrorizing the world. We say, great, someone's going to come and they're going to fix this problem for us, right? She's going to do it. But the demons are those energies that have just become chaotic, right? They're energies that have gone out of control, that no longer know why they're doing what they're doing, that are stuck in their own emotions, their own thoughts. The demons are our own places inside of us that have become crazed, right? That have become a little bit confused. And so the slaying of the demons is not a destructive force that takes things out of the world. When Dorga slays a demon is she brings it back to its true potential. She brings it back to what it was always capable of being, right? So there's never a thought in her mind or an attitude in her actions that says, I'm trying to destroy you or that I'm trying to dominate you or that I'm trying to win, I'm not trying to hurt you, right? Everything that she does, she comes in and she says, because I love what you are inherently, I'm gonna help bring you back to where you can be that. And maybe that means that there's some tough interactions that go into that. But her attitude is always one of, I love you so much. I'm gonna help bring you back to this, right? So as we go into celebrating that energy, we can look at it as we're trying to transform our lives or trying to work with our own uh, demonic energies. We're trying to change something. We can go into it with that harshness or we can go into it and say, we can still do all of that but the underneath it all, the first and last intention is to bring yourself back to a loving relationship with yourself, back to a loving relationship with the world, even with those beings that are still struggling in their stuff, right? Because the energy of Dorga doesn't exist as this outside persona that is going to just take things out of our way. She lives in us, right? So the celebration of Dorga is celebrating where in you, you can stand up in your life and say this chaos that's around me, that's in me, I can bring that back into peace. I can resolve that, right? And that becomes our practice is knowing that whatever that chaotic energy is, it's not bigger than our ability to bring it into peace, right? So Dorga is this indomitable energy, right? That comes in and says, whatever is scaring you so much, that you're running away from yourself, that you're running away from your life. She says, I will stand with you so you can bring it back into a loving relationship, right? That's what it means to slay the demons is to release that painful relationship so that it can become love again. So if you do nothing else during Navaratri, don't think about what you have to change. Can you just look at the places where you are in a really painful relationship with yourself? And in those places, can you start to inject a little bit of this experience of, I love this place in me so much, or at least I can accept this place in me enough to start to bring balance, to start to bring peace, right? That that's what we're working with with Dorga, right? This is how we slay our own demons, is that we give them more of this acceptance and love so that they can become what they've always been, what their potential has always been, right? So find a comfortable seat if you're not there already. Let your eyes close. And find your breath moving a little deeper down into your belly. 
Let your exhales become a little longer. A little nice if you wanna add that Ujjayi breathing on the exhale so you can feel the breath as it releases. You can actually feel that there's a strength even in dissolving. There's an awareness there. It's not the breath being taken from you, but it's you actually feeling what it is to let go. So the Ujjayi breathing is that audible sound on the exhale, slight constriction at the back of the throat. It sounds a little bit like steam. And I've been enjoying asking this question because every god and every goddess has a vehicle, something that they ride upon, usually an animal. And to just feel the way that your breath feels, the way that the energy of your mind feels, the nature of it. So not the individual thoughts, but the nature of it. And if you had to give it a name, what do you ride on? Okay, what's the attitude of the energy that runs through you? For Dorga, it's a lion. For Saraswati, it's a swan. For Lakshmi, it's an elephant. For Ganesha, who is an elephant, it's a mouse. It's no wrong answer. It's just an awareness that this is the energy that is innate to me. And so this is the nature of how I'm going to resolve those places that feel like they're conflict in my life. I can't pretend to be something that I'm not but I can embrace what is innately me, use its full potential because I'm not scared of what it is. That's Dorga, I'm not scared of who I am. And one more full breath, maybe just imagining what you would ride on if you had an animal vehicle. And as you exhale, again, nice and slow, maybe with that Ujjayi sound, bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. And we'll open sound of Om, deep breath in. And let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys, you can release your hands, please. And then go ahead and come forward onto hands and knees. Good, start to cat cow your spine. So with the hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, start to move the spine, inhaling, lifting and lengthening, tailbone and sternum, and then exhaling, drawing the tailbone and sternum towards each other as you round up through the back of the ribs. And then again, inhaling, extending those tips of the spine away from each other. And then exhaling, curling, drawing those tips of the spine towards each other so you get really full through the back body. Good. Nice, you guys. Beautiful. If you want to add in a little bit of hip circling to that cat cow action, you can. It's kind of fun. It's like the, you know, when you were a kid and you tried to see if you could rub your belly and pat your head at the same time. It's a little bit like that. So you keep the cat cow breathing action going, but you can also circle the hips. Nice. And if you're circling the hips, go both directions. So if you've been going one way, go the other way. Nice. And then bring yourself back to center, please. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, come into downward facing dog. Nice, pedal your feet just a little bit. Again, letting the alternating heel press down towards the floor as you bend one knee. Good, letting your hips sway from side to side. You got it. Nice, and then steady your heels towards the floor, please. Step your right foot forward between the hands, lunge. Take both hands inside the front foot, walk to your left until you come to the center of your mat. Turn the toes, come to Prasarita Padottanasana. Good, baby toes parallel the short edges of your mat. Nice, you guys, give a little squeeze in and up through the inner thighs. 
come up on the balls of your feet. So as you come up, you really squeeze in and suction up through your low belly. So draw everything up through your tail. Nice, then exhale, bow a little deeper. Really good, let your heels drop back down towards the floor, but keep that feeling of internal lift. Really nice. And then let your right toes turn out to halfway, 45 degrees. Good, bend your knee, come into a side lunge, keeping your hands right where they are. So don't move your torso. Just let the knee start to move over the ankle. Widen that inner knee and feel yourself drawing your uh, front of your pelvic bones up and dropping your tail. So it's like you're rolling your sit bones under. That's it. And that wideness happens through the inner knee. Good, you guys. One more breath, letting the thighs really move away from each other. Good. And then come all the way back to straight leg. Turn that the right toes forward again. Turn your left toes out halfway, 45 degrees. Bend the left knee, come into the side lunge on the other side. Good. You got it. Again, widening the inner knee, feeling the baby toe edge of your foot root down just a little more. Good. Scooping your sit bones under. All right. So the focus there is not to try to tuck the tail under, but to lift the front of your pelvis. But for that to happen, your sit bones have to rotate, right? Keep your hands as much center as they can be so you get that stretch at the front of the pelvis to the torso. Good. Nice, you guys. Widen. Pull that right inner thigh wider. That's it. And then straighten that left leg again. Turn the toes forward. Beautiful, you guys. Turn the right toes all the way towards the top of your mat. Walk your hands towards the inside of that foot. Good. Keep your left heel flat. Nice. Bring your right forearm up against your right shin. So you're pressing the forearm against the shin. The shin is squeezing into that forearm. Take the left arm up to the sky. Open. Good. If you need a block underneath that right hand, you can absolutely place there. Front knee is still bent. So it's like a side angle variation. Good. But press your shoulder back and then let your heart fall back as your throat moves back. Really nice, Kristen. You got it, Carla. Good, Emily. Good. You guys stretch that left arm over the ear. Just one breath. Lift that left hip higher as you do. So pull up through that back thigh. Nice. And then release that hand down to the floor. Please spin your back heel up. Drop that left knee down to the floor. Flex your right foot. Front foot flexes. Drop onto the baby toe. Let your knee go wide. Good. And then walk your hands up towards that upper left hand corner of your mat. Nice. You can stay there on fingertips or drop down to your elbows if you'd like. Good. Continue to press through that back knee so that your left thigh is not collapsing to the floor. It has a little bit of a lift. Beautiful. Some of you who are in class with me this mor uh, yesterday morning know that I started class this way. Don't worry, we're not doing the same thing that we did yesterday. <laughs> if you were worried. Good. Nice, you guys. Keep that left hand on the floor. Even if you're on the elbow, see if you can stay there. Take your right arm up to the sky and twist. Really good, press your left hip wider to the left as you do that. Mm -hmm. So it's your back hip that's gotta lift and open. Yes, really good. Release that right hand down to the floor, walk yourself all the way back up, take that right foot to flat, and then lift the back knee, please. Good, step your left foot forward just a little bit, take both legs to straight, Parsvottanasana. use blocks underneath the hands if you'd like. Good, turning that left hip forward even a little bit more. So again, you're getting that lift and widening of the front hip, good, right? So whenever we change something, it's important to see all sides of it. So we, I can say, turn your left hip forward, but if that doesn't remind you to lift and widen that front hip, is you're still not gonna have as much space as you could, right? So make it double the action, right? As you turn the left hip forward, you're doing it so that you have the opportunity to lift and widen your right hip, pull that belly up. Good, nice, you guys. Then walk your hands a little bit more towards the right, so towards the outer edge of that right foot, any amount. Nice. Keep lifting and widening your right low belly. That's it. Even more, you guys, turn your ribs. Yeah, nice, Nancy. Nice, Taylor. Good, you guys. Bring yourself back to center, please. Hands frame the front foot. Step your left foot forward alongside the right, standing forward fold. Good. Then bend your knees a lot. Drop your belly onto your thighs. Wrap your arms around the backs of your legs. Let your head drop. Good. Widen your inner knees just a little bit. Beautiful. Scoop into your low belly. Stay hugged in. Draw that belly up away from the thighs and then push your hips up towards the sky to straighten your legs. Keep your head dropped. Yep, your head doesn't need to do anything here. Really just work through that extension of the legs. Press down into your heels. Feel the widening of your inner knees, your inner thighs. Beautiful, you guys. And then release the hands down to the floor. 
Good, bend your knees a lot. Again, let your hips move back in space. Scoop your belly up off of your thighs and then lift the arms up alongside your ears for chair. Good, keep the weight moving towards your heels. So the butt moves back, the knees are not moving forward. Excellent, you guys. Really good, take your hands back behind you, interlace the fingers at the low spine, still in chair. Draw the shoulders up, squeeze the upper arms and then pull your ribs back and in. So again, it's like you're drawing the tailbone down, changing that angle of the sit bones. Good, now bow your head forward, start to straighten your legs, take the arms up and over any amount. Again, not getting obsessed with where your head is. Good, feel that space behind the heart, get a little softer, but keep your arm bones lifting up forward. Yeah, nice, Jess. And then release the hands down to the floor, please. Really good. Step your uh, blah, blah, blah. right foot back behind you. Nice long lunge. Nice job. Good. What the heck did I do? Oh, drop that back heel. Sorry, I remember. <laughs> drop that right heel flat to the floor. Walk your hands to the inside, to the center of your mat. Straighten the legs. Prasarita Padottanasana. <laughs> so walk to your right until you come to the center of your mat. Nice, you guys. Good, feel your feet. Beautiful, lift up onto the balls of your feet, pull your heels up, squeeze in and up. You can let your weight move forward towards your hands so that you really have this sensation of getting your hips in line with your ankles. Good, and then keep that feeling of squeeze and drop the heels back down towards the floor. Let your head drop, let your shoulders drop. So your legs are really holding you. Your hands are touching the floor, but no weight there. Don't push the floor away with your hands. Let yourself drop. That's it. Good. Sometimes gravity is the best thing we can uh, offer ourselves for that long stretch of the spine. Beautiful, you guys. Turn your left toes out halfway, 45 degrees. Bend the knee so it tracks over the second or third toe. Side lunge. Keep your hands center. Good. And then opportunity here. Squeeze the legs towards each other. If you'd like, lift your chest up so it parallels the floor and then stretch your arms out wide to airplane arms. Yeah, hold the lunge with just your legs, drawing those sit bones under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, you guys. And then release the hands down to the floor, please. Straighten that left leg, turn your toes forward and then turn the right toes out halfway, 45 degrees towards the back of your mat. Good, bend that knee, come into the side lunge. You got it, Valerie. Good. Making sure that inner knee is widening and you have this stretching wide of the thighs with the squeezing together of the feet. Optional is to again, lift the chest, stretch the arms out wide to cac cactus, airplane arms, <laughs> wrong random item that we named the arms for. <laughs> lift your chest up a little higher, squeeze those arms in. Yeah, really nice. And then release the hands down to the floor. Nice, Allison. Straighten that right leg, turn the toes forward. You got it. And then walk yourself towards the top of your mat, turning the left toes all the way forward this time. Keep your right heel flat. Bend the left knee. Bring your left shoulder up inside that left knee, planting the forearm, planting the hand. Press that shin wide, squeeze the shin in, and then move that left butt cheek back and in so it's between your ankles. It has a tendency to pop out to the behind you. Yeah, draw it in. Bring the right arm up to the sky so you're in a side angle variation. Nice, Harriet. Good, you guys. Again, block can be underneath that left hand if you need. Really nice. Get that feeling of squeezing that inner shin. Beautiful. Stretch the right arm over the ear, reaching long, pressing up through your right rib cage, up through your right hip. Good. And then release both hands down to the floor, please. Spin your back heel up to square the hips. Take that right knee down to the floor, both hands inside the front foot. Flex your left toes a lot. Let yourself drop onto the baby toe. Let the knee go wide. And then walk your hands up towards the upper right-hand corner of your mat any amount. And again, you can stay there on fingertips or let yourself drop down onto your elbows, these blocks underneath your arms. Beautiful. Keep your left foot really awake. Keep that back knee pressing down and your right hip lifting higher and wider to the right, which might mean that you have to shift the weight of that left hip wider to the left and let it roll under a little bit more. Good. Little scoop to the belly here helps to open up the front part of the pelvis, releases some of that inner tension that many of us have through the psoas, through the hip flexors. Nice. Beautiful, you guys. It's not an easy thing to look at 
what your mind doesn't approve of inside yourself and to say, oh, the only solution here is to love it. <laughs> your mind says, screw you, right? Don't want to hear that. But it is the only solution that there that is lasting, right? So learn to accept the places that are inside us for what they are. Find yourself on that right hand or that right forearm. Take your left arm up to the sky, please, for twist, spinal twist. Yeah, you got it. Open, open, open. Lift that right hip higher, wider. Good. Lift your head, Rachel, just so it's in line with your spine. That's it. And then release the hand back down to the floor, please. Good. Walk yourself back up so that your foot can come flat. Nice job. Lift your back knee and then step that right foot forward just a little bit. Take both legs to straight, Parsvottanasana. Again, using blocks underneath the hands here, if you'd like. Good. Turn the right hip forward a lot so that you have the chance to lift and open that left side. Good. All right, this is typical that when we want something to shift and we try to just uh, hammer at it from the direction that we always have, and we wonder why it doesn't work, we sometimes have to go from behind or the side. We have to look at the other factors that are involved, which is great. And all the stories of Dorga is she's usually called on to fight one particular demon, but the thing about demons is that they tend to accumulate. <laughs> so where there's one that's really powerful, they form this whole army around themselves. So she's never battling one thing, it's always a million things. And this is the same thing in our mind of trying to tackle this one problem. And then suddenly I'm aware of all of these millions of things that are also problems. Can't possibly do anything about any of it. Scoop your belly, please. Walk your hands a little bit towards the left. Good, so towards that baby toe of the front foot. So again, you get a little bit more of that action or that stretch on the outer edge of the thigh. Keep lifting and widening your left low belly. Yeah. So being able to acknowledge that sometimes the thing that we want to confront head on, we need to address things that are to the side, behind, underneath. We need to address that first. Be aware of how those demons are interconnected. Come back to center, please. Nice job. Step your right foot forward alongside your left, standing forward full. Again, bend your knees, drop your belly onto your thighs. Drop your head, wrap your arms around the backs of your legs. Good, squeeze through the arms, but widen your inner knees, widen your inner thighs. Good, keep the head dropped, shoulders relaxed. Good, and then start to press your hips up towards the sky to straighten the legs, press down through your heels. Nice, stay hugged in as much as you can. Really good. And then release the hands down towards the floor, please. Good, bend your knees again, dropping your seat back and low for chair. Scoop your belly, stretch the arms up alongside your ears. And then interlace your fingers, press the heels of the hands out beyond the top of your head, so push out. And as you're pushing out, press back through your hips as though you're going to find that angle, straight diagonal angle from your hands to your tail. Good, press back through your hips even more. That chair keeps moving back behind you. That's it. And then come all the way up to stand, pressing up through the heels of the hands. Really good, you guys. And then release the hands, please, out and down. Nice job. Bring your right knee up and towards your chest. I know your legs are really awake. <laughs> right knee up and towards your chest. Good. Squeeze it in. Take the top of your left thigh up and back. Yep. And then take your arms up towards the sky. Keep that knee where it is. That's it, lift your chest and press your left thigh up and back, butt up and back, that's it. Now swing that knee wide as though you were gonna come into tree, but you're not coming into tree, just bring the knee wide. That's it, nice you guys. Now pull that knee higher up towards your armpit, no hands, that's it, awesome. And then swing that knee forward again in front of you. Beautiful, straighten the leg, press out through the heel, keep pressing your butt way, 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 way back, yeah. Awesome. And then bend the knee again, please. And place that foot down to the floor. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Recognize how much you held your breath. Okay. And then find your feet. And we'll try the other side. So plant the right foot. Bring your left knee up and towards your chest. Squeeze it in. Good. Take the top of your right thigh up and back. And then stretch your arms up alongside your ears. Keep the knee where it is. Keep lifting your butt up and back. So it's gonna feel like your shoulders are actually coming forward, which feels like it should be wrong, but it's not. Good. 
let that knee go wide as though it's coming into tree. So it's hinging open. Keep your right hip pulling wide to the right. Don't let your whole pelvis go with you. Good. And then pull that knee up towards your armpit as high as it'll go. No hands, but squeeze up. That's it. <laughs> Good. And then swing it forward again. Beautiful. Straighten the leg. Press out through your left heel and push back through your butt at the same time. Straightening your leg happens in both directions. Nice, Ralph. You got it, Valerie. Nice, Jess. And then bend that knee again. Squeeze it in. Good, Lisa. And place that foot down to the floor. Beautiful. Exhale. Release the hands to the floor. <laughs> I know. Separate your feet a little wider. Let yourself hang or wiggle. You can bend the knees. Do a little bit of that rag doll. Good. Sway from side to side if you'd like. Nice job. Good. And then steady yourself. Find the center again. Beautiful. Feet as wide as your mat if they're not there already. Take your right hand to your outer left ankle. Take your left arm up to the sky or bring that hand to your lower back. Spinal twist. Again, widening the inner knees. Let your weight move forward. So move the weight of your hips forward towards the tips of your toes. That's it, Alana. Great. Awesome, you guys. Good, release that hand down. Please come back to center and then find the twist on the other side, left hand to outer right ankle or shin, right arm to the sky or to your lower back. Good, letting your weight fall forward again. That's it, Heidi. Nice, Harriet, good, Beth. Nice, Debbie. Really good, you guys. And then release the hand back down to the floor, please. Good, turn your toes out, both feet out to 45 degrees. Bend your knees, come down, squat. Good, finding your heels, the balls of the feet. Beautiful. Nice, you guys. Bring your right hand down to the floor inside your right foot. Stretch your left arm up to the sky, open. Yeah, so you keep widening the inner knees and you keep dropping your tail, letting the sit bones, again, not tuck under, but rotate to so the front of the pelvis is lifted and the tail is dropping. Good, release and switch. Bring that left hand down inside the left knee. Take your right arm up to the sky. Good, draw that left shoulder back, which is going to encourage that left knee to go wider. Awesome, again, lifting the hip points, dropping the tail. Nice, release that hand down to the floor, please. Come down gracefully to your butt. <laughs> Bringing the feet forward in front of you. Good, keep the knees bent. You got it. And then take your right ankle on top of your left thigh. So your knees are bent, feet planted. Left ankle on top of right thigh. I might've just said it two different ways. So we'll go with what I said last. Left ankle on right thigh. <laughs> yes, because it's what I said last. So that's what my brain's gonna remember. So with that ankle crossed, hands are behind you. Press into your hands, lift your chest forward towards the legs. You wanna be rolling towards the front edge of your sit bones here. This is sort of like doing a more intense version of pigeon on your back. So you, the front edge of your sit bones is where you wanna be. Pressing into your hands, you go as deep as you wanna go, right? If this feels like not enough sensation or you want more, take your right heel closer in towards your butt. So that supporting leg comes in closer and then you press into your hands and lift, right? Should feel like a pretty good pigeon-esque stretch. Good. Keep that left foot flexed, please. Nice. Beautiful. And then because I think it's fun from here on your sit bones, you can either keep your ankle crossed where it is, lift your right shin up off the floor into a little boat pose variation with your legs crossed, if that feels like it's not going to work, unwind the legs and just take both legs out in front of you for boat, right? So either keep the ankle cross, lift your shin, lift your chest, come into boat, balancing on your sit bones. Try to keep both knees bent, chest. Yeah. Or unwind the cross of the legs and just have both legs in front of you in boat the normal way. Good. Chest up, chest up, chest up. No matter where you are, if you have your ankle crossed though, bend that knee more, pull in towards your belly and lift your chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stretch your arms up alongside your ears. Really good, Noreen. Great, Valerie. You got it. You got it. You got it. And then slowly release. <laughs> good, you guys. Stretch your legs straight out in front of you. Give them a little shake. Good. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Take a forward fold. Paschimottanasana. Nine days and nine nights, Dorga battles. Right. 
and she doesn't take breaks. <laughs> right? You could say that her break is that she just becomes different forms. When it's not Dorga who can do the work anymore, she becomes Kali or she becomes Lakshmi, she becomes Saraswati, she becomes more and more and more versions of herself. So it's a place for us to realize too, how much, again, we run away inside of ourselves from that process of really acknowledging, confronting the painful relationship that we've formed with ourselves, with the world. So that's the first step. That's all you have to do is really be able to stand in that fear and inject a little bit of acceptance and inject love. Things will change. Walk yourself back up, please. Good, bend both knees again, plant the feet. This time, take your right ankle over your left thigh. It should be the second side. If it's not, do whatever is the second side for you. Good, flexing that foot. Again, you're moving towards the front edge of your sit bone. So if you're rolling backwards, your lower back feels really rounded or you're on the fleshy part of your butt back behind your sit bones, you gotta change the angle, right? You might have to move your feet so that you can get towards that forward edge. Good. And then from there, any amount, you can draw the left heel in towards your butt to give a little bit more stretch. Press into your hands. So you're lifting your belly up towards your legs. Good. But you want to feel that you are continually drawing your tail down and subtly pressing back because that's going to keep your pelvis in a more neutral position. And that's really what we want. That's really what I want. Maybe it's not what you want. It is what you want. You just don't know it for your pelvis to be in a neutral position. <laughs> Good. So again, you are in charge of how deep the sensation goes here. Nice, nice, nice. Chest up. Good. So I used to say during Navaratri that now is the time to look at all of your habits, all of the things that you've been meaning to do, meaning to change, and now's the time to do it. Do it, do it, do it. And I still really believe that, that now is the time to do it because they say anything that you begin during the energy of Navaratri will have uh, a lot of momentum behind it, a lot of uh, power behind it. So even if you don't complete something, if you start it during these nine nights, it's going to carry that heightened energy. But do it with love. Don't do it because you think that you're broken. Do it because you want to know what it means to be whole. Okay. So find that balance point on your sit bones, either keeping the legs crossed or uncrossing the legs, come into boat pose. So lifting that left shin up off the floor, if you're keeping your uh, ankle crossed, keep the, both knees bent, or both knees can be bent or straight, straight ahead of you in boat. Good, hands lift off the floor if you can, extending in front of you. Good, if your ankle is still crossed, especially bend that left knee. Good, pull in and lift your chest up. So again, you're really working that stretch of the pelvis. You got it, you guys. Great, 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 great. Stretch those arms up, 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 up. Uh-huh. There it is. Nice, Lisa. Good, Lena. And then slowly unwind. Beautiful, you guys. Bring your feet to the floor. Let your knees drop wide. Vada Konasana. Good. Forward fold. Don't make a big deal out of it. Forward fold. Good. You can hold the ankles if you'd like. You can have your arms extended. Beautiful. And you contemplate again the energy that seems like it is the most, uh, the way that your mind works, the nature of how your mind seems to act because that becomes our challenge of thinking that that's the only way we know how to be. It's impossible for us to do anything else. Walk yourself back up, please. Good, extend that left leg straight out in front of you. Right foot comes to the inside of the left thigh. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Take a little twist to your left, bow over the left thigh. John is your shots in that. Good. So I found for myself that again, when I call on the goddesses, I call on the forms that I like. <laughs> and that's not always what's necessary. So can you watch those moments where you know that there are places in you that are maybe more deeply compassionate or that maybe are more, um, more assertive if you tend to hang back, right? Whatever is not your norm. Can you be aware that that exists inside of you too? 
and that resolution to the conflicts in your life sometimes require us to step into what is not our norm for there to be peace. And peace doesn't mean that everything is just, you know, okay, there's no more problem, but it means that our stuckness around the situation, the person, the thought, that that stuckness is no longer there. There's the ability for things to move, even if it's still not comfortable. Walk yourself back in, please. Good, bring that right knee up um, to face the ceiling. So that bent knee comes up to face the ceiling. Good, reach for the foot with your uh, left hand. So lift the shin up towards your chest. You're coming into that little baby cradle. So holding the foot with your left hand. Good, lift the shin, move that leg from side to side. You got it. Good, and then come back to stillness, please. Change that up or hand that foot over to your right hand. So just move the leg wider, move the knee wider. Hold to the baby toe edge with your right hand. Pull that knee nice and high and wide up towards your armpit, as high as you can go. And then start to extend that leg all the way out to the side. The left arm can come out to the left for symmetry, leaning forward towards, again, that front edge of your sit bones. Good, and if the leg can't reasonably come straight here, don't worry about it, keep the knee bent. And then just push the foot into your hand to draw that right shoulder in. That's still going to be a really good hip stretch. Good. But the key to it is that you're pushing through your foot. Nice, you guys. Lift your chest a little higher. Beautiful. And then start to swing that right leg forward straight out in front of you. Reach with the left hand for the foot or the ankle as well. Maybe you can't reach the foot. You hold the ankle instead. Deep breath in. Extend. Lift your chest. Exhale. Bow in. Bend your elbows wide like you're going to bring your forehead to that shin. Beautiful. Good, and then bring yourself back up to center, please. Left hand reaches for the baby toe edge of your foot. That leg is still lifted. Twist to the right, take the right arm back behind you. Good, so now you're coming into that straight legged twist, still leaning towards the front edge of your sit bones. Yeah, nice, you guys. Widen that right inner thigh. Don't let it come towards the midline. That's it. And then unwind your spine, come back to center, hug your right knee in. Beautiful. And then send that leg straight out in front of you down to the floor. <laughs> Hooray. Bend your left knee, please. Bring the bottom of the foot to the inside of the right thigh. Janu Shoshasana on the other side. Good. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Take a little twist to your right. Then bow over the extended leg. Should be the second side. If it's not, tell me. <laughs> Excellent, you guys. Yesterday morning I had the whole class was geared towards doing frog pose, full frog. So they really didn't get much of a break. It was just like hip opener after hip opener after groin opener. <laughs> it's a little nuts. That's what you have to do for frog though, right? You have to prepare for that. But what's fun is to remember that uh, there are lots of things to do and not all of them have to be hard, right? So you can still do a lot of valuable work and you don't have to get up off of the floor, right? And this is what we remind ourselves that that energy of Dorga is not the someone cracking the whip that says you have to fix everything that looks like it's a problem. It says you just have to stand up and actually acknowledge what is here that I think is the problem. Where am I stuck in this relationship that I have with the world? And it's the stuckness that is the resolution, not the circumstances. As long as we become unstuck, things can be just how they are. Walk yourself all the way back up. <clears throat> nice. Spin that left knee up to face the ceiling and then reach for the foot with your right hands. So you lift the shin up off of the floor, turn it so that again, you can come into that sort of baby cradle and then rock from side to side, move that hip from side to side. Nice. Good. So how you approach resolving your conflicts also relevant, right? If you go into it with that energy of the jackhammer or the warhammer, right? That I'm going to just destroy what's in front of me. That's not Thorga's energy, right? She steps in and says, what needs to be done here? And I'm willing to do it. Right? Resolve. The resolve to actually do what's necessary and that your focus is only to resolve a conflict not to win.
come back to center, please. Good, so that shin is lifted. Hand that foot into your left hand. So same foot, same hand. Pull the knee wider up towards your armpit and lift your chest. That's the thing is you gotta do both. As you pull that knee back, you have to shift your weight forward on the edge of your pelvic bones so that again, you're getting that stretch all the way down your back, all the way through the muscles that wrap around the pelvis. So pull that knee up and back, that's it. And then start to extend that left leg all the way out to the side. Right arm can, comes out, can come out to the right for symmetry or again, balance. Hand could also stay at the hip or even post on the floor if balance is challenging here. And you can keep that left knee bent. If the knee is bent, just keep pushing your foot into the hand. Keep that left shoulder drawing back and in. Good, and just work that pressure. Really nice. Excellent, you guys start to take that leg forward in front of you, straight out from the hip, reach your right arm forward for the foot or the ankle as well. So both hands are reaching. Inhale, lift your chest, again, leaning forward towards the front edge of your sit bones. And then exhale, bend your elbows, bow your head any amount towards that front leg. Nice, Nancy. You got it, Heidi, good, Emily. Beautiful. And then inhale, lift the chest again. Take that right hand to the outside of your left foot. So you're crossing. Take the left arm back behind you, turning your belly towards that lifted thigh. Beautiful. Keep leaning towards the front edge of your sit bones. Lift the back of your throat. Because this is the point where you realize that your shoulders are starting to hunch from the strain of figuring out what the heck you're doing. Lift your chest. That's it. Nice, Ralph. Got it, Nori. Nice, yes. Lisa, come all the way back to center, please. Hug that left knee in towards your chest. Great job. And then place that left foot down to the floor. Bend your right knee as well. Plant both feet. And then take your hands back behind you. Separate your feet as wide as your hips. Good. Take your hands back behind you. Fingers pointing towards your heels if they can. If you need to turn them out slightly, that's fine. Good. Bend the elbows just a little bit. Hug those upper arms and then lift the back of your chest. So again, you're getting that feeling of extending from the base of your spine all the way up to the armpits. Good, and then from there, start to straighten the arms as you lift your hips up into reverse table. Good, pressing into the balls of the feet. Beautiful, you got it. Don't let the knees splay wide. Nice, Rachel, good, Alana. Nice, Taylor. Good, Kristen, really nice. Beautiful, you guys, release the hips down to the floor, please. Nice job, cross your ankles, roll forward onto hands and knees. And come back to downward facing dog. Go ahead. Take the right leg up and back behind you, down dog split. Beautiful. Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, stack that hip on top of the right. Sorry, on top of the left. And then circle that knee just a little bit. Good. Again, opening, opening, opening. Nice, Debbie. Good, Marjorie. You got it, Nanetta. Perfect. Lift and open that hip. Beautiful. And then point the knee down towards the floor. Bring that right knee forward and wide for pigeon. The knee goes towards the right wrist. Beautiful. Sliding the left leg back and the amount. Good. And then the option here, right? If you typically do pigeon on your back, maybe you go to that. Or maybe you come back to that seated position and cross one ankle over the knee and come back to that variation, right? If full pigeon is not working for you today. So go ahead and let yourself walk forward onto your forearms. Very cute that all of you just went there without waiting for me. <laughs> it's fine. I was teaching on Warrior Two on Thursday night and part of what I was saying is that it's in our minds that typically we come into Warrior Two and what we immediately do is we fidget, right? Don't pretend you don't, we fidget. <laughs> we fix our clothes, we're straightening the knee, then bending it again, we're looking all over the place when part of the pose is to bring ourselves into focus. So I feel like pigeon is sort of the same as we get down and we're like, okay, we hunker down. <laughs> we hunker down to survive the sensation or we immediately go to that forward fold to try to move away from being upright, which is fine. Totally understand it. To look for just a moment at those mo at those places where you think that something is too hard for you or a sensation that you're like I really don't want to feel this right now right those are your dorga moments good 
to treat those moments, not as a place to judge yourself, but as a place to have a more loving relationship. And to find that inner resolve that says whatever is required to take this moment and find space in it, I will do that. I will become that. Right? So Dorga is not a destructive force. She's a liberating force. And her fierceness is not aggression. Her fierceness is I am willing to do whatever is necessary because nothing scares me. And so that's the gift that she gives us is to not be scared of any part of ourself, either the ones that feel like they're threatening us, like they're demons, or the parts of us that could resolve the issue if we let them. Right? Most of us have that challenge, right? How do you feel about being powerful? Take one more breath where you are. And then walk yourself back up onto your hands. If you are in pigeon uh, the traditional way, option here is to bend the back knee, kick your heel in, reach back for uh, the twisting quad stretch. So reach back with the right hand for the foot or the ankle. Good, so you can bend the back knee, reach back, opposite hand. Good, that works too. Nice melody. Beautiful, lift your throat. If you're in that twisting quad stretch, maybe you can really draw down through that back knee, kick your uh, foot back into your hand a little bit more. Maybe you take your left arm up off of, the, off of the floor, up alongside your ear. So it's a truly balancing quad stretch. Good, don't do it if it's making you miserable. <laughs> nice, Alana, beautiful, Annetta, really good. And then release the hand, please, release the foot. Nice job, lift your back knee, please. Good, if you've been on your back, just stay there. We're gonna come to pigeon on the other side. So take the right leg back to downward facing dog. If you'd like a vinyasa, go ahead and take it. Otherwise, we're going to come to pigeon on the other side. You can begin to set yourself up. If you're doing the vinyasa, lovely to come forward to plank, lower down to your belly, find cobra. Come back to downward facing dog. Nice, Ralph. Nice, Valerie. Good, and then when you're ready, left leg up and back behind you, please. Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, stack the hip, start to circle. And again, if you're just on your back coming into your pigeon variation and you don't wanna come up and do that little extra hip circling, no worries. Be where you are. Good, Marjorie, good, Elisa. Excellent, you guys. And then lift and widen, open that hip, lift that inner thigh, inner knee a little higher so you actually feel that engagement of those muscles. Beautiful. And then point the left knee down towards the floor, bring the left knee forward and wide, find your pigeon. And then give yourself maybe half a breath more than you usually do before you come forward. <laughs> so just set that right hip really moving forward, lift and widen your left low belly. Good. And then start to let yourself come forward, but not with the sensation of I'm collapsing or running away. Let yourself place yourself in that forward fold in a way where you still feel like you are connected to what your legs are doing. Good. And that's really the key, right? Is there's nothing wrong with coming forward, but if we come forward and our brain checks out and says, I'm no longer in the pose, I'm somewhere else. I'm thinking about anything else until this pose is over. That's the challenge, right? That's the habit that we don't want the mind to keep doing because then it will do that every single time that there is a sensation that we're not fond of. And that's that sensation of I'm always running. That sensation of there's nowhere safe. So we work with those patterns, right? Those are the patterns that we call the demons. In those moments when I want to check out, can I notice that? And maybe I still do check out, but a part of me at least acknowledges, observes. Part of me stays with that sensation of wanting to run away. And knowing that even if I'm doing it, I don't have to. It's a big revelation, right? To know that whatever our mind is doing is not what it has to do. power of Dorga to continuously change, continuously find more and more and more of yourself. But if you are looking for something to do, right, traditional, to so use this time to, again, get your life in order. 
They pay attention to places where there are unresolved issues. Pay attention to the routines, the structures of your life. Send those messages you've been meaning to send, have those conversations you've been meaning to have. Clean out your house, clean out your mind, clean out your body. And so my suggestion is to do all of those things, but do it with the one purpose of trying to find a more loving relationship with the life that you have, the world that you live in. And the demons, when they're slayed by door guys, they say that they die with a smile on their face. And sometimes even her name on their lips and a thank you. It's a reminder that even those energies in you that seem like they are destructive is that it's not that they want to be that. There's no nefarious you know, part of you that's trying to destroy you. But until that stuckness of the relationship changes, it's the only thing they know how to do. Take one more breath Then walk yourself back up. If you have been forward on your belly, walk your hands back up. Optional, bend your right knee, kick your heel in, reach back for the twisting quad stretch. The left hand reaches back for the foot or the ankle. And again, if the twist feels like it's too much, you could reach back with the same hand. Beautiful. And then optional again, if you feel pretty steady there is to really root down, stretch that right arm up alongside your ear. Nice, Lana. Great, Valerie. Good, Lisa. Nice, Jess. Beautiful, Rachel. Really nice, Annetta. Good. Nice, Marjorie. Doing your thing. And then release the hands back down to the floor. Please release the foot. And lift your back knee, please. Step back to downward facing dog. If you've been on your back, come on up for downward facing dog. You got it. Downward dog. Good. Pedal your feet a little bit if you need. And then bring your feet together, please, and slide your sh shoulders forward over your wrist for Vasisthasana. Coming onto the baby toe edge of your right foot, right hand holds you. Take the left arm up to the sky. Good. And then slide that left foot to the inside of your right thigh. So that top knee bends like you're in tree pose in Vasisthasana. Good, so foot to the inside of the thigh if you can't, so you're in tree. Beautiful. And then some of you might even pull that knee in towards your belly, reach for your foot, and then extend your left leg up to the sky in a little bit of a uh, Padangustasana stretch. Beautiful. And then if you're really crazy, you might go from there, scoop into your low belly, roll that right foot onto the ball of your foot and come into Hanumanasana. Just bring that left leg towards the top of your mat. Slide straight in. Beautiful, Alana. Yeah, one of us did it. We all did it. Great job. And then slowly come on down. Yeah, come into down dog for a breath and then drop your knees to the floor child's pose. Drop your mind to the floor, drop your mind to the lap of the goddess. <laughs> and say, I don't even know what the heck happened. She said a lot of words. <laughs> You're like, why at this point in class would you throw Hanuman from, you know, Vasi Stasana? Why would you do that to us? That was the first. That was the first? You've never, you've never done that one before? Attempted to do that. Yeah. Come on back up. You got a second side to do. That's the great thing. So if you miss it on the first side, second side, come back to down dog. I think I'll take a pass. You'll take a pass. You have to do something on the second side. You still have to come into Vasi Stasana. That is my requirement. You don't have to do anything else, but you have to come into Vasi Stasana. So for, bring your shoulders forward over your wrist, plank pose. Good, feet together, coming onto the baby toe edge of your left foot, left hand holds you right onto the sky. Don't get into your head about this, right? About what it's all gonna be. Just keep going with your breath. Good, slide that right foot up into the inside of your left leg, tree pose. This might be where you stay and that's perfect. For some of you that feel pretty steady here, bring your knee in towards your chest, reach for your foot. Yeah, and then start to stretch that right leg straight up towards the sky. You got it, nice Marjorie, you got it. Good. And then maybe you can really press into your hand and your foot, scoop up. You got to lift up higher away from the floor and then spin your hips forward as you take that right foot in front of you into Hanumanasana. Yeah, I know, Annette, you're looking at me like, what the hell are you talking about? 
Yeah, sorry, I can't demonstrate it for you right now. Good, and then slowly come on back down from wherever you are. If you got to that point where your leg was up in the air, awesome, right? Three quarters of the way there. Come on back, please. Find your down dog and then drop your knees to the floor, please. And then either come into child's pose if it feels like that's what you need or sit back on your heels in Virasana. Good, so either child's pose or Virasana, sitting back between your heels. Good. And if you're in Virasana, take a moment, letting the eyes close, let your breath get longer. Start to feel yourself settling back in and down into your sit bones. And if you're in child's pose, you can do the same. Feel yourself just dropping into that feeling of heavy, heaviness, settledness. You can always come up into Virasana if you're done in child's pose. Start to feel your breath get a little longer. And as you're exhaling, you imagine that exhale does not stop at your tail. It keeps going all the way down deep into the ground. that heaviness, that feeling of being drawn down. Bring your mind to that, drawing down. Storga is often associated with our first chakra. She is very much related to how we operate in the world. First, second, third chakras. getting to the root of what you are afraid of about yourself. What you're afraid you aren't and what you're afraid you are. And to know, right? We say that the goddess, that presence that she is, is always a loving one. She never comes in and says, let me change you. She comes in and says, let me love you exactly as you are. Let me encourage you to embrace those parts of yourself so that you or maybe scared about, confused about. And through that, transformation will happen. Just keep letting yourself be drawn down. She's not an energy that says go up and out. She's an energy that says go down, stay. Just keep exhaling long and deep down. If you want to repeat her seed sound, her seed sound is doom. The exhale can come with that repetition, doom. And just another moment to let yourself settle in. We don't do this enough, right? We're in that constant mode of I have to keep going and going and going. So I forget what it feels like to just be here inside myself. And sometimes it's not because we've forgotten that, it's because I don't want to be here inside myself. So I run. Even if it's only one breath, can you stay here with yourself? And if you are sitting in Virasana, go ahead and let yourself walk forward so you let your forehead come down towards the floor. If you're in child's pose, stay where you are. And then everyone, you have the opportunity here to either holding the ankles or you can interlace your fingers at the low spine if you'd like. Roll up onto the crown of the head, lifting your hips up off of your heels, rounding into your back. If you have your hands clasped, you can stretch your arms up and over. Again, if you're holding your ankles, beautiful place to stay anchored, just roll up onto the crown of the head and really round through your spine. Good. Nice, and then slowly release the hips, release the hands. Beautiful. So you unwind yourself, move as slow as you'd like, but find your way onto your backs. If you're in the room with me, turn your heads to face the center of the room. While I try to discover what happened to the light switch. Thank <laughs> you.
Good. Nice bending your knees, please. Good, draw the knees in towards your chest, come into happy baby. Good, taking the knees a little wider, reaching for the ankles or the feet. Nice, you guys. Good, press the low back down to the floor. Let your elbows bend just a little bit. I mean, if that means you have to hold lower on your legs, hold lower on your legs, you can let your elbows bend. Good, if you're struggling, take your hands lower on your legs, you can let your elbows bend. <laughs> Go. Beautiful. And then bring the knees all the way together, please, squeeze. Good, cross your right thigh on top of your left, stacking the knees, separate your feet, reach for the ankles or the shins, omukasana legs. Yes, Andy. And then keep the legs wrapped, release your ankles, squeeze the shins against each other, and then scoot your butt over to the right and drop your knees to the left. So you're coming into a spinal twist with the legs wrapped. So knees should drop to your left. Right leg should stay on top. You can stretch your arms out wide if you'd like. We'll come into cactus arms or arms overhead. And if your legs don't like twisting in this position, untwist them. Stack the knees on top of each other. Sometimes referred to Dorga as the fortress. It's one of the meanings of her name. And she is a safe place, a refuge. You also say that she is the one that is hard to know, hard to get close to. Is it hard to get close to a feeling of really loving yourself? Maybe. Unwind your legs, please. Come back to center. Knees in towards the chest. And take your left leg on top of your right, stacking the knees. Separate your feet. Reach for the ankles or the shins. You can move the feet wide. Knees are still angled up in towards your belly. Shoulders relax as much as they can be. So again, that might mean that you have to hold higher up on the legs here. closer to your hips. Nice area. Good. And then keep the legs stacked, release the ankles, bring the shins against each other, move your hips over to the left and drop your knees to the right. So you're coming into that spinal twist with the legs wrapped. again, if the legs do not appreciate this position, the knees or the hips don't uh, like this rotation, unwind the legs and just stack the knees. And slowly bring yourself back to center, unwinding the legs, hug the knees in towards the chest and bring your forehead up to meet your knees, squeeze. And then release the shoulders, plant your feet, final pose, one bridge pose. As you plant your feet, arms can come straight or into robot arms, the elbows bent. Press into your feet, press into that top ridge of your shoulders, lift the hips up off of the floor, lift from the back of your heart and feel yourself just pulling in both directions. Your tail pulls towards your heels, your sternum pulls towards the top of your head. Your heart goes straight to the sky. A long throat. So use this pose as the opportunity to decompress the spine. 
Nice, Judy. Beautiful, Valerie. Nice, Rachel. Gotta watch your knees, Taylor. They don't go too wide. Good, and then slowly release. Try and roll down your spine if you can. Find that little bit of a curve. Pause for a moment as you let your sacrum rest. Good, and then begin to either stretch the legs straight out in front of you, or if you would like to come into supine baddha konasana for your shavasana, you're welcome to do that. If you're in a supine baddha konasana, I'm not gonna cue you out of it. So at any point you wanna come out, straighten your legs. You'll find your shavasana, letting the arms rest alongside you, palms up. Again, letting your breath get long, letting that feeling of weight, letting yourself drop into the floor. Not dropping into the floor as though you are not able to hold yourself up, but that release, right? As though you're really dropping into the embrace of someone who loves you. Knowing that the floor will hold you. And so you're just dissolving into that sturdiness. Very gently, feel your breath get a little bit deeper. Let your body begin to stretch and move whatever ways serve it well. And as you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. 
And take a moment before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. It's cute to watch some of you pop up from Shavasana like, oof. Take as slow as you'd like. And letting the hands come together to rest in front of the heart, palm to palm. So Dorga, nine nights we have that celebrate Dorga and two of her forms, right? We typically say Dorga for the first three nights, and then Lakshmi for the second three nights and Saraswati for the third three nights. And we can think that these are different energies with different purposes and we're doing different things, but it's all the same. It's all this opportunity to find a loving relationship with yourself on all levels, because sometimes love looks different. Sometimes it feels different in this moment or that moment in front of this person or that person in front of this thought or this part of myself, love looks different. And so the teachings of the goddess are to become so absorbed in the experience of love, the experience of wanting there to be nothing but resolution that you no longer care what the form looks like. It no longer is something that scares you if it needs to be fierce or it needs to be soft or it needs to be this or it needs to be that. She says, it doesn't matter if it's coming from love. So you find yourself getting deeper in that awareness of yourself. Where are you scared to love yourself? Where are you scared to inject that into the world the way that it is, not yesterday, not the way you hope it is tomorrow, how it is right now? Where are you scared? That's where you start with Dorga, is can I sit with that fear and inject acceptance, kindness, love? Can I do it right this moment? and let transformation happen. Not the way I hope it will, but the way that it actually has to. She says to know love in all faces is to know the goddess. That's why she appears in so many forms. So do whatever you're going to do with Navaratri energy. It's big energy, so do something great. But do it with the one intention of creating a more loving relationship with yourself. Om Dum Dorgae Namaha. I bow to Dorga. I bow to that place in me that is beyond fear. Close with the sound of Om. Deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much. Great work today. Really proud of all of you doing Vasi Sasana coming into Hanumanasana. Beautiful. <laughs> I will see you guys soon. Have a beautiful rest of your day.